Hello, I'm Professor Francis Schmidt, uh, and I want to cover inverse kinematics inside Modo today uh, with this example of an inchworm. Um, if we look at an inchworm, and I'll show you that quick, uh, they work in a sort of interesting fashion. Um, the front, the back, I should say, pulls up, and then the front moves forward, and the back pulls up, and the front moves forward like that. So we want to do that here with this very simple model. Um, this model was made with the, um, the tube primitive over here, actually, and then a little bit of subdivision work. Nothing too complicated at all. Uh, I'm going to do all of the setup of this rig um, in the setup window. The first thing I need to do is I need to make a bone structure that goes throughout it so that we can we can attach the um, geometry to the bones to be deformed by it. Uh, the first thing there is a skeleton. Uh, I want to make sure the skeleton tool properties are set up. We want intersection on. We want to make sure symmetry is off. And we're going to start at the back here. And we're going to move forward. Um, let me go in like this. And I will click uh, good. Good place to start. I want to click a bone for each. Uh, I guess it'll only give me a certain distance on them, but that's okay actually. I want to make sure I have a bone for each um, leg. Uh, I'll probably come back and refine that. Uh, let me keep going up here. Uh, when I modeled this, I model it in the position of its most extreme curvature. Uh, and that's purposeful because I'm going to make the bone structure that way too. As you see. And we'll try to do that same thing down here. We get a bone for the legs, another bone for the legs, and we'll end there. Good. Uh, I'm in the right position to fine tune this. Let me make sure it's in the middle that the intersection worked. Ah, uh, it's nicely in the middle. Good. Now, let's make uh, some bones for the legs. I'm going to turn on my symmetry across my x-axis, which is the uh, red axis over here. Uh, so, symmetry x-axis. And if this works, I should be able to pick this one. We'll pick one there, which should, ooh, that's not exactly what I wanted, although I think I can move that. Yeah, that's a little happier. Good. Like that's where we want it. Uh, and I will then give them a bone down, let's lose that uh, control tab panel. I'll give them a bone down to there. That looks good. Uh, and then we'll pick this one here. We'll see where those want to go. Like that. And let's see if we can click down there and get that inside there well. Oh, I like that very much. Let's try this guy. Go like that. probably have to adjust this a little bit that way. Uh, maybe a little bit out too. And then, boom. Good. I'm liking this so far. Let's see if we can get it on the back legs over here. Uh, we'll pick this one here. adjust those to be roughly at where they bend. I'm not certain we're going to even do too much with the legs. We might just make them whinny a little bit or something, but uh, I want to have the option there, and I want to show you a more complex skeleton, too. Uh, I'm going to have to fix that last bone down there, but that's not hard to do. Uh, where should we put this leg? Here. And then 
we'll go there. Ooh, that's bad. Uh, we'll go here, how about? That's better. Well, let me see what moving that does. Ah, there they are. I was looking for the other one there. As you can see, um, since it's on symmetry, it's producing two at the same time, which I like. But I want to make sure they're in the right place. And then here, OK, that's looking good. I have to move that last little tail there, but that should move pretty easily. Like that. OK, that's a pretty handsome looking skeleton for this inchworm, I'm thinking. Um, now I have to get the inchworm deformed. So let's pull the mesh down here so it's closer. It makes my life a little simpler. This is the whole skeletal chain we made here, which could be pretty complex, but we're not that worried about it. Uh, I'm going to turn off symmetry because it's a bad idea to leave it on. And I'm going to head over to deformers. We now have to deform all of this geometry with those bones. Uh, make sure you turn on setup which will give you the yellow outline here. Uh, select your mesh. Actually, I'm going to do it the other way. Double click, select all the skeletal stuff that you want to be controlling your mesh. Then shift select your mesh. Then the option to bind should come up. And the best type of bind we can get is a heat bind. Um, I will talk about limit weights later. Let me hit OK and let's see what happens. Hopefully it turns all colorful. Oh, that's just what you want it to look like. Bright and colorful. What's happening there is that um, each color represents one of the bones. And so let's say that this bone here was yellow. The points that are yellowest are most controlled by this bone and this bone here is green. The points that are green are most controlled by that bone. So the things in between are controlled by both bones. So this is exactly what we want to see. And this is right now a forward kinematic chain, meaning if I take one of these bones and I rotate it, everything should rotate with it like that. Um, making this move that way would take forever. I'd have to take each bone and do it and rotate it. It'd be a mess. So what I want to use is inverse kinematics. Inverse kinematics allow me to move just one thing at the head and have all the rest of the bones follow uh, in a process called solving. I'll show you how it works. The first thing I need to do is I need to select the root. That's the root of everything back there. And I need to go under inverse kinematics. Uh, turn on setup. And we get a choice right now to assign inverse kinematics. I'm going to click that. OK. Uh, we got this full body IK thing. Um, and I don't think a lot else, but that's OK. Uh, now I have to pick where it's going to be controlled from. And I'm going to pick the very last tip of the bone here. And then I get a choice to add a goal. And when I do that, you're going to see a new what it's a small controller. It's just a location uh, that will be the thing we can pull on to make this whole chain move. Uh, I selected it. I hit Add Goal. And if this all worked, I turn off Setup. I take that goal. And if we translate it, not rotate it, everything follows. Isn't that cool? OK. So I now have an inverse kinematic chain all set up. Now, let's animate it. Um, what I have to do is I have to animate the goal, and then I have to animate the root. But the problem here is that I cannot put the goal underneath the chain. Uh, watch. If I try it, it will error out for me. See? A uh, dependency was depend, uh, blah, either way. You can't do it. So what you have to do instead is you have to take another imaginary point and then put everything underneath that. And that imaginary point 
will be at the very base of what's going on back here. Uh, if I go to add item here, ah, if I go to add item here, locator is what I want. A locator is just a location. XYZ location starts at 000, which is fine. Um, I might move it up a little bit. Uh, let's take our locator there and let's translate it up to about here. Good. Now, I'm going to take all the skeleton stuff and drop it in a locator. And I'm going to take the goal and drop it in a locator. And by doing that, and we'll rename the locator. Rename, 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 rename. Rename. Uh, we can call that uh, base. Good. When I move the base now, everything moves with it. OK. Uh, now let's make some more moves, OK? I'm going to go over to Animate. A uh, good place to start. You know what? I'm going to look through the camera uh, so we can get an idea from there. Camera, uh, render camera is fine. Good. This is what the camera is seeing. Um, so what we have to do is we have to take the goal, and I have a timeline down here. It's about 480 frames. Uh, we're going to keyframe its location at zero, and then we're going to go about a second in, let's say, and we'll stretch ourselves out to our fullest length. Maybe there. So this is what's happening right now, or uh, like that. Uh, we'll go out about two seconds, and we'll put ourselves back. And when we do that, in this window down here, we should see a pretty clean sine wave. I'll show you what I mean. As a matter of fact, I can see how clean the sine wave is. Right there. Worm goes out, worm comes back. Uh, there's a sort of weird issue here where I'd like the worm, the worm goes in and he dips down too far there. So I'm actually going to lift him up a little bit. Uh, and do the same thing on the backstroke. Maybe about here. Lift him up a little bit. Oh. And we want to get back here, and we want to go back to down. Uh, maybe about there. Let's play that once just to see what it's out and in. Good. Now, we want the worm to keep moving. So, this is what happens before the action of the keyframes. This is what happens after. What I want to have happen after is I want it to oscillate. I wonder if oscillate smooth will give me a better... Yeah, oscillate smooth gives me a nice clean sine wave. Out, back, out, back. Good. Now we have to move the base. So here's the thing here. If I'm looking at this from a side view, like that. Um, right now, uh, this is about 10 units. Um, I'm sorry, about 8 units. And at its fullest extent, uh, how far does it go? We'll go to frame 25. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 ish. It goes roughly 10 units. So let's select the base, just the base. And we'll keyframe it. And then we'll go out to about frame 24 or so. And we'll keyframe it again so it's staying in place. And then we'll go out to frame 50 or so, and we'll move it forward about 10 units. About to there. If it worked, 
the worm reaches out, grabs, and pulls his butt up. Ooh, that works actually pretty nicely. Um, what we want it to do at the end is we want it to offset uh, smooth. And what that'll do, let's frame this window up here. Uh, give me my base C position. Good. What that will do is that'll make the worm keep on going. Like that. Uh, one thing that bothers me about the worm as I'm looking at him, around frame 50, and it's going to be actually on the goal, I have to push the goal down. Uh, let me make sure I'm on the right frame, too, because I don't want to... I hate it when I pin too many frames in a space here. Let's just push this down like that. Good. And now let's see if that's... He reaches forward, and he pulls his butt up and reaches, or she, as the case may be. I don't know. Okay. Let's take a look and see if this worm is animating. Uh, this is the head of the worm. Let's go to our camera view. That's what the camera would be saying. We want the worm to move on by. We'll, we'll deselect everything here. Okay, let's say the worm is going to fly by us. We'll back out a little bit. From here, from there. Let's hit play. We'll see what happens, okay? Here comes the worm. And it heads by us. I actually want it to head by us at a weird angle. Like that. Like it's going to ram right into us. Although I think we reach too far. We'll get closer to it like that. That's sort of it steamrolling at us. Good. Okay. That is inverse kinematics. Uh, a whole chain set up on a worm to do an effect like that. Um,